So this here is the Sim Skunk Works Fiat Air Itali G91, which is a bit of a mouthful. So from this point on, I'm just going to call it the Fiat G91. But it's by Sim Skunk Works and it's in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. And it's one of only a handful of uh, jets, military jets, certainly, that we've got in the Sim at the moment. Now, I must admit, Sim Skunk Works aren't a company I'm familiar with. But in any case, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at this beastie uh, on its own merits and see what we think. Then the time-honoured fashion, we'll be going through the outside, the inside, and taking it for a flight and seeing what we think. But this is quite a, f a unique little jet. It's a nice little fighter jet, and it's something I've grown uh, a fondness for. Now, as I say, the uh, limited number of military jets we've had so far have been quite varied in quality, and I've reviewed a couple of them, and uh, this one reminds me very much of uh, the MB339 as well. They're both lovely little aircraft, and so what we'll do is, uh, as I say, we'll have a look at this one and see uh, see what we think. Now, it's a fascinating little jet. It's got quite a few little uh, quirks to it and some areas of handling that uh, you need to be aware of flying this. But fortunately, it comes with a very good manual, and that manual is this one here, so I'll just bring it over. As you can see, the manual is basically the real-world manual. Um, it's just been lifted uh, directly across. But there's a very interesting circuit here. Uh, this is the typical landing pattern. It's basically a spiral over the threshold. So whereas we might be familiar with a normal military pattern where you'd come along the runway, do a, a, a break into the downwind, have a straight downwind section, uh, maybe for configuring the aircraft and then come in at the other end for your base turn onto finals, or maybe you're familiar with a civilian circuit where you would do like a rectangular circuit. As you can see, this is just a spiral basically. So as you approach your threshold or, or shortly before you reach your threshold, you uh, dirty up the aircraft, slow down, come into a descending spiral all the way down to land. So it's it's quite an interesting uh, quite an interesting circuit or, or landing pattern, I should say. It actually reminds me of some of the uh, early jet approaches in inclement weather, where basically you would home to the beacon over top the over the top of the airfield and then just do a descending spiral till you were visual. Which by today's standards, as I say, it's very archaic. But uh, yeah, let's uh, let's just get rid of that now and let's have a look at the jet. Now I have to be honest, I think it's a lovely looking jet. And this is my favourite uh, colour scheme. It's got six liveries, uh, and I do love the faded nature of the uh, paintwork here. But I suspect with the low slung uh, intake for the jet engine down here, they've probably had uh, had quite a few suck up some fod through their lives. So as those who've watched my videos know, I do like to look at uh, the big picture and then zoom in to find some uh, finer details. Uh, and as you can see, overall the 3D modelling on this thing is just to die for. It's really, really nice. Wonderful curves, wonderful shaping, complex curves around here, for example, with the reflections showing them off particularly well. Very nicely done. There's very little on this aircraft in the way of sort of straight lining, which is where the polygons are used to build up the curves. If there's not enough polygons, you end up with straight lines instead of curves. But as you can see that the curvatures and the lines here are done absolutely superbly. The 3D modeling is something that uh, it's... Really, it's got to be seen to be believed because some of the areas, such as around here where you've got the wingtip probe and the lighting, they've been done superbly well. Common areas where there's issues, 3D modelling, are often where there's either complex joints, such as here. Let's just see if we can zoom in a little bit closer. As you can see, there's no real issue around here. Very nicely done. And this is a very complex looking area with a combination of the wing leading edge of the pylon and also the wing fences very nicely done as i say the shaping has been done to a very very high standard and one of my favorite things to look at in terms of seeing how well developers in fact actually as i look at this look at the the bomb carriers here in terms of the weapon carriers and the little pins that come out to hold them steady are absolutely superb just pan slightly further to the right and you can see that the whole section of 3d modeling let's just go in a little bit closer into the fuselage there Maybe out here. Yeah, it, it's just fantastic. I cannot really fault the 3D modelling on this thing. It is exquisite. And I'll show you another of my favourite areas, which is round uh, by the tail. But let's just dunk ourselves down a bit and we can have a look at the gear, which is an area that really you don't spend that much time looking at. But you can see the detail that they've gone into here with uh, 
the undercarriage, the nose wheel here is exceptionally well detailed. The nose strut here in terms of the oleo and the oleo extension, the chroming effect, it's all absolutely wonderful. The hub, the arm, etc., absolutely lovely. And I think you'd have to agree that the modelling here is of a very, very high level. Curious about this little uh, attachment sticking out here. And we've got one of the first very, very few instances of, uh, of a bit of squaring off here. But look at this. This is an absolute work of art. It really is beautiful. And the attention to detail in this 3D modelling is, is just delightful. Likewise, the use of lighting with the texturing to get this kind of satin black with the lighting around here at the bottom of the nose wheel. To all intents and purposes, it looks exactly like a photograph of the nose wheel of the aircraft. And you can see lovely lighting with the reflections down here in terms of the underside of the nose. The whole thing, I have to say, is just delightful. Now, one of the things I've noticed is that there's a, a simism here in terms of having nose wheel steering. I don't believe the real aircraft has nose wheel steering from all that I've read through. I believe the steering through differential braking. So I know that's something that uh, has been a discussion point previously. Now, for me, that uh, that doesn't necessarily mean it loses any immersion factor but what it does mean is that braking is potentially more familiar to uh, to most people than differential steering let's just look around towards the main undercarriage wheels and you can see again let's just zoom in a bit on that because that is that is just delightful look at that absolutely superb the close fitting gear doors the fact that the gear looks like it's sitting on the ground with the various actuator arms, etc. Absolutely wonderful. The gear bay is nicely detailed. Lovely texturing there. But I have to say, overall, the 3D modelling is uh, is just tremendous on this aircraft. Again, the 3D modelling around the cockpit. Now, this is something I've seen in virtually all aircraft I've seen in the sim so far. This kind of uh, disparity between the tones on the canopy frame and the tones on the the windshield seems to be something that's consistent across most add-on aircraft but the level of attention to detail in modeling the cockpit as you look from the outside in is just staggering absolutely amazing now the textures as you go very close in just start to lose a little bit of clarity but as soon as you go any distance away they look absolutely superb but looking down the airframe a little bit let's just turn there have a look there you can just see that there's an element of straight lining here on the fuselage but uh, it's Barely noticeable, actually. The wing surfaces, in terms of their appearance, they've got this sort of uneven appearance, which you get with a lot of aircraft after a period of time, particularly with the uh, metal skinned aircraft, but very, very nicely done. So, moving further back, you can see that we've got some really nice areas of modelling around here with very complex curves, very complex shaping, been done absolutely beautifully. Again, we've got the kind of uneven surface of the uh, upper surfaces of the tail here. Very complex area to model around here. And overall, it has to be said, the things are really, really nicely modelled, including things like the, these Vortex generators down here. Not quite sure what the aerodynamic purpose of these is, but in any case, they've been very, very well modelled. And you can see that the text, as soon as you take a step away, starts to become very, very good. And overall, it's consistent with all the liveries. It's very, very nice. I have noticed a few areas where textures don't quite line up. I don't know if this is one of the aircraft uh, that's got it, but let's have a quick look. See, yeah, you can see here on top, textures aren't quite lining up and aren't quite matching up. But it's not something that's very visible from uh, most flight situations. And again, you can see the cockpit is just fantastic. I love it. Different coloured glazing as well over the nose for the front of the windshield, but that detail looking from the outside in is brilliant so let's have a look at the inside okay so from the inside um yeah it, it's pretty much the same the 3d modeling of the seat is very nicely done hasn't quite got the same level of detail as i've seen previously in some models in terms of uh, straps for example but very very well done overall a little bit of uh, straight lining around here but actually to be fair it's very infrequent that you'd ever actually see that the actual actual overall 3D modelling of the uh, of the cockpit is very very nicely done. There's a very good attention to detail, although there's, there's some odd bits which uh, which we can have a look at in a bit. But actually, if you look at it, it's just delightful in the way it's been modelled. And as you come down towards the panel, you can see the 
depth, which is an important point, and uh, it, it's significant here that you can see different depth of gauges sitting proud or sitting on different surfaces. Nice texturing, nice writing. The needles look like they're part of the gauge, which might sound like a silly thing to say, but at the flip side, um, you do see aircraft where you'll see like a, a dated uh, bitmap image of the, the dial face, and then you'll see a crystal clear, brand new, shiny white needle. But this all looks authentic. It, it's got age to it. It's got history to it. There's a couple of interesting uh, instruments here. Uh, this one, this is a normal ADF. However, it's an RBI. It's a relative bearing indicator. So it doesn't give you a bearing of saying that the, the beacon 030, it will tell you that it's 30 degrees right of your nose, 40 degrees right of your nose, and going this way, 30 degrees left of your nose, etc., and so on and so forth. So there's a few interesting variations into some older instrumentation, which is fascinating. So here's your PHI, your position and homing indicator, which is a fascinating instrument, because what you can do in the real aircraft is you can set a track that you want to make good and you can set a range and then as you fly along that track it will just count down the range as you go which is fascinating this down here is uh, something that i remember a, a more modern equivalent of which is a gsdi we used to use it for navigation but it's a ground speed and drift indicator and from that it will determine the wind and the navigation system of this aircraft is uh, doppler so basically it's got doppler sensors on the bottom of the aircraft they send out beams and depending on the change of frequency of what they get back, they can work out your ground speed, your drift, whether you're drifting left or right of track. And therefore from that, they can also work out your wind speed. Or the other mode you can set it in is that you can actually set it with a wind speed for the navigation system. And it will work on that wind speed rather than uh, what it's detecting itself. So a fascinating instrument nonetheless, and it's got the usual other things. So you've got your vertical speed, got quite a fascinating artificial horizon here. And that's one of the things I'd say about the aircraft. It's, it's got a lot of stuff that is unfamiliar, but once you're aware what it is, it's very traditional in, it, in its function. So engine instrumentation down here, and then you've got a number of switches. Let me just see if I can move slightly right to show you the switches. So you've got your electrical switches here, battery generator up here, you've got your primary and secondary inverters, and then you've got a selection of electrical loads, etc. down here. Now, it's common with uh, a lot of military aircraft. There's quite a lot of systems that aren't uh, functioning or aren't clickable. It can be loaded with and drop bombs, although it's not really something that's accurately portrayed in the sim, which is more a sim limitation than uh, more than an aircraft limitation. But it's simple things that please me, like turn the battery on. You can see the lights come on. We've got full fuel, but you can test the fuel low lights. So all the press to test lights are working which is uh, very nice. I'm not entirely sure if my monitor's displaying the colours particularly well because this is very pinky and that's kind of like a pastel yellow so I'm not sure if they're uh, doing it a disservice or not. We'll just turn that off in case it simulates the battery running down. But again, things like the animation of the needles, so I'll just turn it on. The animation of the fuel flow, uh, sorry, the fuel quantity, the needle as it... Uh, comes down it's not just snatching down it's uh, very very nicely done so it's showing a level of damping to the meter to the gauge sorry let's just center ourselves up again uh, it's that one I use for it now one of the things I mention is if you go into here and go into general tabs and camera you can adjust your camera height now as default it's at uh, 50 percent I would suggest for this aircraft you need to knock it up to about 65 maybe 70 because you've got very poor visibility over the nose with this aircraft so it's one of the things I found quite commonly is if I was coming into land I would lose sufficient forward reference in relation to uh, to the ground and I would uh, end up spearing in which brings me on to another element which is this thing has quite high landing speeds so we'll try and mention some of the speeds as we go through the flight but I have to say, overall, the aesthetics of this thing are really, really well done. The 3D modelling is lovely. The texturing, if you look at the wear and tear on some of these panels down here, look very, very authentic. The dirt and wear around the throttle console. So as we work our way forwards, you can see all of the various uh, panels are lovely. Wear on the starter cover here, which, yeah, there we go, for the starter switch, which is just brilliant. Fuel system, as we continue to work our way around. The gear is a three position switch so i don't know if it's going to work at the moment no it's not going to work 
I assume that's just because we haven't got any uh, pneumatic pressure. It's just uh, a simism. Canopy switch down here. The drag chute does work. I love this map case up here or this chart case or whatever it would be used for. Very, very atmospheric. And coming around here, the sight. The sight does turn on, but I tend to turn it off because it's not a head-up head up display. It's just a gun sight. And so for me, it's a bit of a distraction, but you can turn it on. And then coming around here, we've got uh, gun sight light and uh, emergency wheel brake, etc. And then down here, you've got, as I say, we're back to your electricals down here. We're working around the right panel, you've got your oxygen here. Continuing round, this is your ADF. Now the ADF, this uh, instrument here has a switch for ADF, but it's not fitted in the manual. Uh, confirms it's not fitted to that instrument. So your ADF is just this uh, RBI over here. But it's got a very uh, traditional way of tuning it. You can see in terms of the tuning setup here. And if I'm honest, although uh, it is implemented, it's not something I've uh, managed to figure out. But obviously you've got your controls and this is your... Uh, for tuning it which is rather quaint I do like that this is down to your transponder and this is down to your PHI and your station selector lights up here IFF etc and then round to the uh, circuit breakers which are, aren't functioning unfortunately but uh, you know I think for uh, where we're at in terms of the aircraft it's very very nicely done and overall I have to say the atmosphere in the cockpit is just wonderful it really is a beautiful looking piece of work so she's not rocket science to start up come down here turn the battery and the inverter on we might as well put the sorry the generator and we'll put the inverters on as well we might as well and then really most of the rest of it is over here so we can come over here we can make sure we've got fuel shut off valve is in the open position so make sure that's up and not down you can close that your booster pump needs to come on HE ignition will put to normal. Jet pipe temp limiter will put that on. Although in reality, I don't believe that's necessary for a start to be successful. Emergency engine HP fuel system. And we don't need anything out of the droppable tanks. And at this point, I'll just open the canopy because um, I want to demonstrate something which I think again is a simism. And I think it's I've seen it in quite a few aircraft for the sim at the moment. Basically, the the sound in the cockpit doesn't change when you close the canopy so we'll have a quick look at that as we go however down here make sure we've got uh, full and three movement on the throttle there we go and what we'll do is we'll press the starter just move the throttle into the idle position and start to have a look at the engine instruments and jet pipe temperatures uh, rising nicely I've just noticed that this in really old jets this kind of text like this was actually uh, I think it was radioactive so that it would glow in the dark RPMs coming up nicely and dropping back down and there we go it's a nice easy start lovely let's check everything else is in order we can close the cover now because we've got a good start Make sure we've got full and free movement of the throttle. It uh, jumps over this idle bit, I think, but it doesn't actually affect the function of the throttle. Let's reset our viewpoint. And then if I bring the, uh, the canopy down, here it comes. As you can see, no change in noise. As I say, I've seen that in other FS sorry a Microsoft flight simulator aircraft and I think it's a sim limitation rather than something for the developers I don't know if there's a workaround but maybe there is maybe there isn't so flaps are yeah you drop like a stone if you don't monitor your speed with a flap so let's just have a, a quick look in at the flaps down here and you can see it's got percentage for extension and each click of the uh, of the flap lever gives you a different position so normally I'd be looking at 20 degrees for takeoff. This is your pitch trim indicator. So you can see if I trim up, it does that. Not quite sure what the significance of the red area is, but we'll, uh, we'll pop it to a level trim position. Speed brake indicators down here. So it's basically either in or out. And it has varying effectiveness. 
but a word of caution with the flaps is that even if you click it once if you so for example I've got a three position switch I've got a Thrustmaster Warthog throttle quadrant and I use the flaps lever on it and I can click it up one click and down one click but the problem is is if you leave it on the, the down click it will come all the way down and you can see if we just pop outside now the flaps are basically like barn doors they're like you know that's going to slow you down quickly let's get inside because it's noisy so likewise if I push it all the way forward and just leave it there it will go all the way up so it's not a momentary switch if you leave it in that position it will just keep going up or down whichever it may be so as I say the nose wheel steering isn't technically accurate so let's spin around to our left so as you can see we've changed airframe so we have a look at a different livery of the of the six we've also changed location this is uh, Liverpool uh, it's one of the five upgraded uh, airfields in the new uh, UK uh, third upgrade pack for FS 2020 and very nice it is too to be honest I don't have uh, Liverpool scenery so uh, having something like this upgraded is very nice uh, in part I wish they'd done more airfields like it but you know it is what it is so jumping into the sim in terms of this aircraft what we need to do is uh, basically brake full power brakes off 95 knots rotate the nose and uh, hold that position then it should fly off between 125 and 135 uh, so let's make sure we're on the tow brakes and it does say in the manual we can power up to full power on the brakes and away we go and I'll try and uh, see if we can stay somewhere near the centre line can't promise it airspeed is alive centre line there's 95 rotating hold it and there she goes she's away my apologies if you can hear the uh, husky howling in the background gear and flaps with a very low limiting speed of 185 for the gear and then 160 to 180 for the flaps and we're away so the first thing that you notice is the sort of bobble around the nose uh, we've got no turbulence set for today, so this is one of the things I've noticed a lot with um, a lot of FS2020 aircraft is this kind of bobble that when you move the aircraft or trim you get this kind of effect of uh, a bouncing nose. Um, as I say, not unique to this aircraft, so I suspect it's more to do with the sim than it is to do with anything else. But let's bring ourselves round to the left back towards the airfield and uh, we can then start to have a look at some of the stability elements of the aircraft. Uh, and see how she performs so she's uh, very nice to handle if I'm honest very nice to fly right so we haven't got the greatest horizon in the world but in terms of stability get out of this cloud we're not going to do anything too dramatic we're quite low so roll stability seems to be the same as every other aircraft in the sim pretty much at the moment i.e. it's neutral not quite properly but it'll just sit there and hold the uh, hold the pitch sorry the roll angle that you set it to but there we go straighten it we can set it to the left straighten it set it to the right so it's neutral um, regardless and I think I would have expected because of the swept wing configuration for it to be slightly positive at the very least but yeah it's, it's completely neutral and as I say that's a common trend amongst uh, all of the aircraft that are so far in the sim so Pitch is positive, so if I can actually get as level, which with this trim isn't easy, if I bring the nose up, but I need to uh, adjust my power setting, you can see it's, it's very sensitive. So bring the nose up, and what we should see is the nose drops as the speed drops away. So the speed is dropping away just below 300 knots, nose is starting to go down. It's a very long period for the oscillation, so I'm not going to do the full uh, down because we may well hit the ground before it restores itself, but the speed is coming back up again. You can see down here, we're coming back up from 280 to 90, 300, and the oscillation period is too long. We're going to hit the ground before we fully recover from that. But it is weakly positive in pitch stability, and in terms of yaw, this is one of my big concerns. That's full yaw left and right. 
So whilst it is strongly positive in terms of stability, the authority does seem to be lacking a little bit. Um, and I've checked in terms of axes, etc. And they're all exactly the same as, ha as I'd have for any other aircraft. Uh, I haven't limited the maximum deflection at all. So uh, in some respects it does help keep the uh, airfield, uh, the aircraft uh, following a centre line. It does track a centre line very easily as a result of that. But it does make things like spinning very difficult because you just haven't got the authority in the rudder either to put the aircraft into or out of the spin. So what we'll do is we'll just get a bit of altitude and then we'll have a look at the slow speed handling. And we'll bring it down to about 150, something like that, maybe a bit lower. And uh, we'll investigate what the slow speed handling's like, so 200. Now this is one of the things I've mentioned on some other aircraft is the drag modelling in the sim as a whole doesn't seem particularly great. Aircraft don't seem to lose speed um, particularly well. And you know we're climbing at uh, zero idle thrust and it's not losing speed massively okay let's reintroduce some power to arrest the uh, rate of change of the speed bring it down a bit and it is noticeably woollier in terms of flight it, it's more vague it's less precise the roll rate appears to be reduced, which is all of the things I would expect. Let's have a quick look at adverse yaw. Let's just put a bit more power on so we don't stall. We'll look at this uh, cloud here. Once we get through this cloud. And if it, uh, when we roll left, we would expect it to, roll, to go in the opposite direction. So, no. No, it's, it's got no adverse yaw, um, which to be honest is to be expected. We'll just get ourselves a bit of speed and have a look at the high speed handling, which I think we can probably guess at in terms of being uh, slightly overly stable, but very quick in terms of response, control response. It's not great weather today, is it? Let's go over here a bit and dodge these clouds. And follow this coastline and get down. Get plenty of speed, and we can then investigate our high speed handling. We're about 350 here, we come around back towards Liverpool and that sort of neck of the woods. Okay, let's trim ourselves a bit. See if we can trim to something roughly level 400 knots speed is noticeably quicker and uh, in the manual it says that the limitation for roll is 150 degrees a second uh, I've had a look at that and uh, it doesn't seem to say that the aircraft can't achieve more it's just that that's the limit so one two and a bit which is 150 degrees a second really one two and a bit so yeah the roll rate seems to be uh, matching the books and that's one of the things I'd say is the speeds in terms of the takeoff, the landing, the roll rate uh, etc they all seem to match the book figures which is good which is good as I say I think the handling is maybe a little bit too sterile um, it may well be I'm getting a little, little bit of stutters I'm wondering if it's either loading in clouds or terrain there um, but as I say it's uh, certainly a very pleasant aircraft to handle so what we'll do is we will uh, head back to the circuit in a moment and see what we think with regards to that. Right, so here we are. We're going to come up and uh, try our strange spiralling approach. 300 knots, just approaching 1,500 feet, looking to cross the threshold. As we cross, we're looking for speed brake out, throttle to idle. There's a big pitch change there with the speed brake coming out. And we want to be coming around this, maintaining 1500 feet, I believe. I'm not entirely sure, but this is a descending spiral. As we get past 185, speed brake goes in. Then we can put the gear down. 
continuing our spiral. Let's see how we're doing. Yeah, this is a very weird approach. Watching the speed as we come down past 150. First couple of stages of flaps. I've never flown an approach like this before. We were looking for 160. There's the field, we're high. Bring the power off. Put the rest of the flaps down. And our minimum speed is 130. Yeah, we're very high. It's a fascinating approach. Need to get back on centre line. Come on, don't want to touch down. Off centre line. That's a very high touchdown speed. What we do have as our friend is this bit here, if I can pull it. And I've noticed there's a bit of a bug on the landing in that if I get rid of that, you'll notice that I'm not touching the brake pedals at all. But it brings itself to a nice halt. And there we go. Let's take some clear of the active. And uh, come up with some sort of conclusion. Okay, we just bring it to a halt here. Okay. So, there's four things I'm going to mention here. Let's just... Uh, I'll tell you what, let's just shut it down, get rid of the noise. Oh, didn't, didn't put the jet pipe limiter on. Didn't have it on. Let's turn that off there. There we go. That's quieter. Right. So what do we think then? Outside. Absolutely wonderful 3D modelling. Nice use of PBR. Nice shapes. Slightly different gun layout you can see in this uh, version instead of the two large cannons. It's got four, gun, uh, four guns to each side. But the 3D modelling, the complex shapes, the compound curves, etc. Really, really nicely done. Overall, I, I can't fault it. It's, it's superb. Um, simple things like the, uh, the veins here in terms of the vortex generators. Flat positions, flaps, streaks in terms of coloration. The exterior is just gorgeous. The only little thing is if you look really closely, you find the occasional line squaring off and you find the occasional texture that starts to get a bit scruffy around the edges. But aesthetically, this thing is drop-dead gorgeous. End of. Right, interior. Jumping back inside. Drop-dead gorgeous again. There's quite a lot of... Come on, stupid simulator. There's quite a lot of stuff which is inoper inoperative or doesn't operate. Um, there's quite a lot of stuff that does, but in terms of the weapons and things like uh, the cameras, etc., I wouldn't expect them to function, so I wouldn't expect to have a... a pretty little switch or light for them but there's a lot in here that is functional i'll be honest i haven't found out how to get the wind unit working here in terms of the doppler system and using the phi is not something that's uh, second nature at the moment but it's got uh, an interesting variety of uh, instruments most of which are uh, common and familiar to most people this is an interesting one down here by the way normally you'd have a two minute turn to do a 360 but this is a four minute turn so uh it was quite interesting that Normally you'd expect one minute to turn 180 degrees for instrument flying. So that's a, a, an interesting variation on the theme. But as I say, overall, uh, 3D modelling in the cockpit, the texturing, the colours, the overall effect of the cockpit are absolutely brilliant. Likewise, when it's in 3D, uh, in VR, and you realise how close to your shoulders these canopy frame rails become and uh, how small the space is in here, uh, you become very, very aware of you know almost strapping the jet to you it's, it's lovely it feels absolutely great in vr so in terms of the flying of this thing um it's a lovely sprightly little performer uh it's got some idiosyncratic behavior in terms of its flaps you get full flaps on this thing it does tend to drop like a, a lead balloon which is very very nice to handle very very stable uh if anything that would be my uh, my comment is just how stable it is and certainly with a swept wing platform I would expect 
uh, some positive stability in roll, but we didn't seem to have anything. It was neutral. The only stability we had um, of note was in yaw, which I would expect, and pitch, uh, which was gentle and gradual in terms of stability. In terms of trimming, it seems to have the same uh, behaviours as a lot of other aircraft, that if you're slightly off speed, it seems to be a little bit bouncy. And as I say, the stability seems to be on a par with other FS2020 aircraft in being uh, such that it seems to run on rails. Slow speed stalling, for example, is, uh, yeah, same as pretty much most of, uh, most of the other aircraft in the sim. I have a query about the Ailer, uh, sorry, the rudder authority, which for me seems to be a little bit lacking. But overall, I'd say she's very, very pleasant to fly. Um, the interesting spiral circuits, new to me. I've never done something like that before. Um, but it, you know, that's fun. That's enjoyable. Um, it does uh, test your speed control. Uh, and this thing, um, to be honest, she should have been touching down at around 130 knots. But I held her off and she, she was well, well, well below that before she finally squealed the wheels on. But my lineup was rubbish, which was why that was uh, the case. So, overall, guys, outside brilliant inside brilliant flying is good i would say but i think that's within the modeling environment of the sim itself and the final thing we haven't mentioned at this point is the price which comes in at a mere 19 pounds um and i have to say for that money i think it's a bit of a steal if i'm honest um so yeah there we go guys if you enjoyed the video please don't forget to tick like share or subscribe and i'll see you in the next one take care